Showtime. What time? Oh, it's showtime. Welcome inside Game Day Winnipeg. Darren Bombing to my virtual right, the legend Chris Walby joining us from parts unknown. That's right. The Matt. lake. The lake is what you call it, right? But uh, when I say showtime, Chris, it's because we've had to move times around a little bit. But for everybody out there joining us live, thank you for hanging tight. Uh, for Amen. those who are watching the podcast or watching this afterwards, you got to join us live. Uh, as we always do the day before the game, uh, get to youtube.com slash bonfire sports, sub up uh, and do it. Chris, lots to get to today. First of all, how are you feeling? And, uh, you know, uh, how are you feeling about this Blue Bombers team at 13 and 2? 13 and 2, and they're making all these, uh, you know, acquisitions at the trade deadline. They, they, you know, they don't stay status quo. A team like Saskatchewan, not to go there, but I thought they'd make a bunch of changes because of the issues they have. Not happening here. We go right to it. I mean, Kyle Walsh has done a great job, you know, picking up Keon Adams a couple of days. He got cut from Saskatchewan. And actually, I love the fact that Jamarcus Hardrick was involved in that. He said, hey, listen, this kid's a hell of a player. We need to pick him up. And that was a great move. And it probably allowed them to trade Cedric Wilcox and then pick up all the Darby. What a great move. And then yeah, Desmond Lawrence, um, rookie of the year last year for the time. Yeah. I mean, we're just getting stressed. Tells me how much a team wants to win, right? I mean, and obviously, when you're making these moves, you're trying to better yourself for the playoff run. They're one win from away from clinching first place. Just a smart move. Uh, Kyle Walsh is doing an excellent job. Yeah. So to be uh, fully clear, the Blue Bombers need a win and a BC Lions loss. The combination of those two things through the rest of the regular season, one Bombers win, one BC Lions loss, those two things happening means Winnipeg will host the West yeah. Division final at IG Field, the Madhouse on Matheson on Sunday, November 13th. So still work to do for the Blue Bombers. And of course, uh, Saturday night in Winnipeg, Chris, the Edmonton Elks in town. We're going to talk about Alden Darby. We'll get into uh, the Blue Bombers continually evolving health situation. Uh, some of those roster moves that they made that, that you touched on there. We'll talk a little bit about Brady Oliveira, the Blue Bombers run game. Uh, I don't know if we'll get to it today, Chris, but in the coming weeks, I definitely want to talk to you about the CFL awards and all-star voting. Yeah. Um, but let's talk about the little piece of information, the what could have been via Dave Naylor of TSN. He uh, did a hit with Farhan Lalji yes, just the yes. other day. I know where you're going with this, yeah. The trade that did not happen, Kenny Lawler nearly returned to Winnipeg via trade. Chris Jones and Kyle Walters having conversations, but there was Kenny Lawler suffering a collarbone injury, his season now done, and obviously not healthy. He won't be traded to Winnipeg, but... Man, you, you add in Kenny Lawler to Ellingson and Schoen and Dembski and, and the rest. That is a very, very talented group they could have had. I think they still do, yeah. but could have added Kenny Lawler to it. I, I just think that's almost unfair. You know, it almost looks like, I mean, if you get Kenny Lawler, who's uh, leading the, uh, the Eskimos and receiving before he got injured, uh, I think he was what? Uh, I got him here. Uh, five touchdowns, almost 900 yards receiving. He's missed a few games, came back. He had an ankle injury, came back, and as you say, made a spectacular catch, lands on his shoulder, as you say, season-ending uh, surgery, and he's gone now. Um, I don't know how you can I, – I, to me, I'll be honest with you. Uh, I know that Edmonton is in, you know, fighting for a playoff. I think they have one opportunity, maybe. They got a but threat. But real, realistic, realistic that they're done. I mean, they're, 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 they're toast, exactly. But having said that, for a team to trade a guy, to me, it's cleaning out salary cap. He's making it 300 grand. He's the highest paid receiver in the CFL. Well, not even you know cap, but just salary, right? Well, salary. And, and they're not yeah. going to pay him that next year. Nobody's going to pay him that. I'm sorry. That's just, it's, it becomes the Winnipeg. He's got to take a, a pay, pay cut. Now he got hurt. He's missed a number of games. I don't care who you are. You could be Peyton Manning. The thing is, when you're not 100%, you goes down significant and you have less bargaining or your chips are not as high as they would be. I mean, I think it would have been exciting. Absolutely. But we have such great receivers. I, listen, no no offense. Dalton Schoen, uh, Greg McCray, uh, Brandon O'Leary-Orange, you've been a huge supporting guy about this guy. And he, big, tall guy making 
kind of catch. He's got great hands, runs great routes, reads. And then you got Rashid Bailey, who just comes up with catch after catch, backwards falling into the end zone. They've got, and then let's let, and I'd be remiss. I have to apologize now. I left out the X factor that I talk about every week. The man, nine touchdowns, five in his last five games. Nick Dembski is a freak. I mean, this guy is playing so well right now. I don't know how he gets so wide open, but that's his scheme of Buck Pierce offensively. Does it, they pull guys out, and he runs a seam route, or he runs a goal route, and he's wide open for a touchdown. They have tackle to lose. I want people not. To, I want people to understand that not getting Kenny Lawler is nothing. I'm, I'm not, this is no offense to Kenny Lawler. I, he's an excellent receiver. Makes great catches. I think he's the best but receiver have, in the league. But we have the talent. We have the talent here to do it. The fact yeah. that they picked up all the derby, the fact that they picked up Desmond Lawrence of DB, that's two guys really that they can play anywhere. Um, and Keon Adams, who's getting his first start as a bomber in place of, you know, Jackson Jeffcoat and the guy they traded, Cedric Wilcox, the third. Uh, so, hey, good for them. I mean, they just, bombers are smart. They're picking up, they're not stacking. Status quo, that's what I like. If you're not doing, trying to improve, status quo doesn't win championships. You have to be aggressive, and that's what they're doing. And Kyle Walsh is doing a great job of that. Yeah, if you're not getting better, you're getting worse. Uh, that's right. That is coaching, right? And, and the Blue Bombers obviously doing everything they can to um, play their best football every single week. The 0-0 zero and zero mentality, trying to go 1-0 and oh every week, uh, has definitely worked. Yeah, you know, they suffered a loss in Hamilton. A couple weeks ago, they suffered a loss at home to Montreal. But at 13-2, and two, things do look pretty good. Um, oh. Mario Houston down to injury. Uh, obviously losing Nick Taylor, as we learned this week, for the season. Uh, is it a tough hit? Uh, Malcolm Thompson out this week. Uh, the Hallett brothers, uh, Noah in particular, yes. uh, have been struggling uh, to get back into the lineup and, and get healthy and that sort of thing. They have a lot of guys... Uh, that they've had to go without. Patrice Rene, another Canadian uh, rookie out of the NCAA, he's been injured. Um, you know, all of these guys. And then there's obviously the weak side linebacker with Malik Clements on the one-game injured list. And yes. Kyrie Wilson still on the sixth game. Neither of those players practicing. Uh, but, but that said, Chris, they needed to add talent at defensive back. And in the words of Mike O'Shea, they weren't going to just trade for anybody. Yeah. They wanted to trade for a particular type of player, and they got their man. The same guy they traded for last season in training camp. This time it comes, you know, the day before the trade deadline. Alden Darby Jr. is versatile. He was an all-star yeah. dime back in Winnipeg last year. This season, yeah, he's been a healthy scratch at times for Hamilton. That is the biggest he's thing. Corner, he he wasn't corner, happy. And he's a halfback. So he can really he play anywhere if they need him. Yeah, but he was, you know, listening to his interview, he said the thing, he thought he'd be on the field a lot more. He wanted to be on the field more. He wanted to be a contributor, wasn't on the field, was very There's disappointed in how they were utilizing him. So very happy to come back to Winnipeg where he feels he can get opportunity to play on a regular basis. He's not playing this week. Uh, and yes, he played with this defense last year, but uh, obviously there's always new wrinkles. I mean, Richie Hall, defensive coordinator, wants to make sure he's 100% back to what he knows because one mistake costs you, right? And if all of a sudden the terminology changes from Hamilton to, to Winnipeg and you make a mistake and something happens. So the interesting thing to me is Reddy Cramdy getting his first start. Yeah. Uh, this is huge to me. I mean, if you, look at, uh, if you look at Edmonton, they don't have bad receivers. They have nine – listen to this, DB. They got nine different starters on offense since the last time they played the Bombers. Mm -hmm. And actually, if you want to look at the back game, I went back and watched that game, 24 to 10, the Bombers won. They were, the time of possession was crazy. Edmonton had like 37 minutes. Zach Kalaris had his worst game as a passer. 7 of 16. 43%, I mean, right? Yeah. I, that, I remember that. Very, I remember that. Very un like right? And so I'm thinking to myself, what did Edmonton do to him? Listen, they got some studs up there. That uh, you know, Jake Serezna, uh, who did not play last time, yeah. ten quarterback sacks, four forced fumbles, having an outstanding year, especially at that tackle position. 
Uh, usually it's the ends getting all the love and all, you know, all the attributes. But this guy is coming in. He's playing very well. Uh, listen, I think this is going to be a good game. I know that I, I – you know what? you got to like Chris Jones. He loves his players. He wants to get the best out of them. They brought a whole – it was a training camp for half the year. They were bringing new guys in. They said, we need to find the guys that can actually fit our system, much like Winnipeg, much like O'Shea. And they're doing some things. They've got, you know, they got a new guard, new tackle, and Andrew Garnett. They got a new left tackle, Martu, Martez Ivy. Uh, they've got some changes there. And Darrell Walker, you know, who if you watched him play last week, he played. He had an outstanding game. This is a guy that once led the league in the CFL in receiving. And he's got one touchdown, but he did not play against Winnipeg last game either. Did not play against the boss. They got a new kid, a real exception kid by the name of Dylan Mitchell. He did not play. You got a new guy that was in training camp for the Bombers. Lucky Jackson. Who was right. in training camp. Last time he played was in preseason for Winnipeg. Getting an he, opportunity. They sniped, they sniped him up quick. Go, go, oh yeah. And they like him. So you watch him. He's just he's very happy to be there. Uh, yeah. I, if you look at paper, I know the Bombers are favored by, what, 13.5 points or something. It's ridiculous, yeah, it's right? 12 and a half now on uh, SIA.com slash bonfire. And that's where you want to go to sign up. You get a 100% bonus up to $500. You're not going to find that anywhere else. Uh, so go to that website, SIA.com slash bonfire, and, and help yeah, support man. me and Blue. Amen. Yeah, 12 and a half points it's at right now. And you guys can find all the lines at that website uh, as well as on the ticker below. But... Yeah, it's a big number. It's a big number, Chris. And and it's a huge the, the number. It, no matter who they're playing, the Red Blacks, the Elks, the BC Lions, Calgary, Toronto, Montreal, it doesn't matter. They say they're a good football team and they're playing good football. It doesn't matter. They say the same thing every time. The reality is, yes, Edmonton has lost a lot of football games this year. They have uh, they've been a better road team than a home team. Yes. But you cannot judge this Edmonton Elks team today based on their collective season they are a much much better football team today than they 100%. were a month ago or two months ago there's no doubt in my yeah, mind about that. You know, db to your point they're four and four on the road they've got that record they set which is not a good record of losing 15 straight at home um not for the fans yeah they for some reason you think that home would be a great advantage to them but they just can't seem to get it done they seem to play and i remember a coach once said that sometimes on the road because the players have to stay together, because they're in the hotel, because they have team meetings, they're always there. Uh, there's some sort of a thing, a chemistry that maybe the players like being there. There's no distractions. So they play a little better on the road. I, listen, but I, I'm a guy I always thought home was an advantage. But these, uh, Edmonton seems to play better on the road. Um, can they, can they, can they do, uh, come up with a big game? Listen, Taylor Cornelius, uh, Cornelius is not a bad quarterback. But he makes mistakes. He's a young guy, and you expect him to make mistakes. He the makes a lot me. of mistakes. He makes a lot yeah. of costly turnovers yeah. late in games. He did it in the XFL. He's done it in his yeah. CFL career. Yeah. The reality well, is, though, his arm is an absolute rocket. Oh yeah, rocket. rocket. Yeah, he's got a rocket. It's other, crazy other thing, how strong his arm is. He's also a very strong runner. He is a big lumbering guy, but once he gets moving, he can pick up yardage. He is the type of guy that will lower the shoulder and finish yeah. a run, whether it's Adam Big Hill or Willie Jefferson or a DB, Brandon Alexander, trying to take him down. Uh, there is that threat all the time. They don't have a huge run game, but you're right. They definitely have talented receivers as as you mentioned mitchell is a player that's come on this year darrell walker not the player yeah. he used to be but no. still very very talented lucky yes. jackson marshall uh the canadian Osikusi uh is also a, a very uh, good player that they have there so there are some weapons um Did but you, you i, know, I watched this game the secondary they do need to step up well listen they they were winning the game last time against montreal I still remember one play, and I was I, uh, they threw a little out to uh, Danny Vandervoort. Yep. You, I think it was a former number one draft pick in the CFL years ago, and he dropped the ball, couldn't catch it. What a game clincher. And I always say this as a receiver, if you hit, touch your hand, Tommy Joe Coffey said, if it hits your hand, you should be able to catch it, or at least have an attempt to catch it. That was a big break for them. The other thing is, though, you talk about the run game. Well, Taylor Cornelius has rushed 
for 407. 62 times he's taken off with the ball. Nice 6.6 yard average. He's got seven touchdowns, but he should not be the number one rusher. Now, having said that, let me correct something. Kevin Brown, who has only played there four games, this kid's a stud. Do I agree with what they did last week against Montreal, going three times from the five, run the ball? No. I would have just faked the handoff and have Cornelius take off around the corner and try and get a touchdown. But having said that, Kevin Brown's averaging 7.4 yards a carry. Big, strong back. Uh, they really like this guy. I think that, you know, he could be a game changer. Uh, and I, I guess I just want people not to think that just because they're playing Edmonton and looking at 4-14 four and 14, or 4-11, four and 11, excuse me, that it's going to be a, just a bingo shot where you just get put the X or a win. Do I think right. the Bombers are going to win? Yeah, I do, because it's, it's tough to, win, to lose at home. But do I think they'll play well? Remember, the last time they, they, the Edmonton won was in preseason, DB. And I know it's preseason. But they're the one team that beat the Bombers in preseason. I mean, it was a different thing there back then. They had a whole different squad of players. But I always say to people, be, be careful. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. I, know, I, know. You know that. I know you know that. And But it is worth mentioning. A 30-20 Edmonton win at IG yeah. Field uh, back on May 27th. The other thing, too, is Edmonton has had a ton of turnover this season with personnel, uh, with personalities and leadership in that locker room. They are a very different group. Um, you know, from earlier this season, they've made some trades. They acquired Avery Ellis at defensive end. Uh, I'm yes. with you though. Uh, Jake Serezna at defensive tackle is a really, really good football player. Uh, he's he's my it? top pick. He's my top defensive tackle right now. Yeah, uh, he is. He is that good. Injured for the season uh, very, very early this year. So it's been tough for them uh, in that sense. Uh, and, and changes in the defensive secondary. Jerron Carter no longer starting, listed as a backup, but we will see him. Uh, Kai Loxley, they're a uh, bit of a dual threat guy, right? Can play quarterback, can play receiver. Yep. Teams. He's out of the lineup for Edmonton as well. But moving on from Edmonton, let's talk about the Blue Bombers, Chris, because that's why. Okay, let's do it. That's um, right. Let's do it, baby. So with Cedric Wilcox coming out, Keon Adams comes in. For those that don't know Keon Adams, he played 10 games for Saskatchewan this season, has two sacks. He also played a handful of games last year as well. So a veteran, more experienced than a Cedric Wilcox, than uh, an LB Mac, uh, who is no longer with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. That made Wilcox expendable. Yes, uh, and they they uh, they step uh, Keon Adams uh, in there. Bronson Massey on the practice roster, big physical guy with a great NCAA resume. We'll see what he has at the pro level, but a little bit of depth there as well with Jackson Jeffcoat uh, missing another game. Um, linebacker is the one area I want to talk about, Chris. Donald yes. Rutledge Jr. Yes, that's a linebacker. huge, huge. Linebacker. Loses his starting job to Reda Cramdy. We'll get to that in a second. I want to talk about weak side linebacker and what you've seen from Shane Gauthier because the last two games that he has played, Hamilton and Saskatchewan, they've used their tight ends. They've used their big-bodied slot backs, and they've yeah. gone after Shane Gauthier in the past game and, and to success. Well, it's, it's about mismatches, right? You want to, you, you, When you look at a team and you're scouting that defense, and I'm talking if I'm Edmonton right now, uh, you know, I'm looking at who do I go after? Well, right now, I got I got a guy in the middle named Adam Big Hill. I think he's a stud. Shane Goche. And now I'm looking at Reddy Cramdy, who's playing in place of, of Donald Rutledge Jr., who they say has just worn out. He's not used to the long season. Uh, they, they gave him a break. Uh, it, it's, it, to me, it's this is a huge, huge gamble. Like, Cramdy is a special team guy. So I look at both sides. Now, you talked about Shane Goche. Goche, I think, is a good player. But I think if you get him matched up with a running back, and that's what I think that Edmonton is going to do. They're going to try and get him covering one-on-one -on -one with either, uh, you know, either, uh, what should we call it, uh, Kevin Brown or uh, Antti Milinovic Dlitre, or this other kid they really like, Christian Salisbury. Got some big speed. He did a great job returning kicks the other day. So, I mean, you, you want to find mismatches. And so I used to always say this. You get a, a linebacker has to cover a running back, and they go out and up. It's called the wheel route, and it just caused so much problems for your linebacker if you cannot cover with the same type of speed. And I think the bar, uh, I think when you talk about Kevin and Salisbury, 
you definitely have some speed there. Uh, it's going to be a big task for Shane Goche and I think more so already Cramdy does. I know about Goche, but I really want to see what this young man, because he's on a side now. Think about this. You got Reddy Crabby, you got Evan Holm, and you got Jamal Parker. All basically, you know, not veteran players. Evan Evan had his uh, first interception last week, so did Jamal Parker. Cramdy has been here set for years, but uh, missed yeah. the majority. But special team guy. He's a special yeah, team guy. Team guy and, and missed now, the majority hey. of last season with injury, too. Well, they must like the kid. I mean... Uh, I, I'm still not sure. Like we, I know one of the things we talk about in DB, I know you do a great job. You're at practice all the time. You're asking O'Shea about these questions. But, you know, O'Shea is one of those guys that he's puts the umbrella over his players. He's never going to tell you the truth about what's going on because he likes to keep it in-house. He won't tell you about Donald Rutland. He'll just say that, you know, some of these players are not used to a longer season. They play like 9, 10 games in collegiate football, university football. And now all of a sudden they're in the 15, 16 year, uh, game thing and they get they get worn out. Uh, but the good the so, good news is Reddick Cramdy has played well at the dime, and if they need to spell him, they can bring Donald Rutledge Jr. in. Uh, last game, they took him out in the third quarter. I saw him walking around the sidelines, Donald Rutledge, no helmet in his hand. I didn't know if he was hurt. I didn't know if it was discipline. I didn't know what it was. But you're right with the umbrella, and you're right yeah. with acting. Uh, we don't know. We don't always know the entire truth. Just speculating here, but you know, we, we, we do not know why they've decided truly to, to move on from Donald Rutledge or at least bump him down the depth chart. And you know, it could be Mike O'Shea doing a little bit of Chris Jones cooking when he's facing the chef himself in putting a guy at number two on the depth chart and they end up playing him 95%. Yeah, yeah. Um, yep. um, but Cramdy is is one thing. Jamal Parker, numbers were okay, uh, was a little bit concerning. First day of practice this week, Chris, as the Blue Bombers rookie defensive back um, was absent. Uh, Michael Shea said he was excused, uh, didn't get into any details other than that, as he rarely ever does. Uh, no, exactly. To me, Parker, I think, is getting better every week. He's definitely had his struggles in the you know the back-to-backs against Saskatchewan and then Hamilton game and then playing Saskatchewan again last week. I've seen him get better every single week, the way Mike Gauche likes to put it. Yeah. Young players need to see more pictures. Evan Holm, on the other hand, I'm not sure if he is getting better every week. Um, when, well, cheers to you. When... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> when um that's when very good BB. <laughs> you're such an idiot and, and people, that was good, and people, man. Are asking, people are asking you right now are you surprised wow. chris that darby is not dressed for saturday's game uh, when he is ready to dress where do you expect him no. to fit in corner exactly no i yeah that's a great question DB, I think he's going to be at that uh, dime or the halfback position. Uh, I agree with you. I think Evan Holm uh, could have a bright future right now. If I'm Edmonton, I'm attacking that right side. I really am. I'm going right after him. I'm going after Cramby. I'm going after Evan Holm. I'm going after Parker. Listen, you got Dietrich Nichols on the other side. Winston Rose, the veteran. And Brandon, who's going to get better every game. This will be, his, I, th I believe it will be his third game uh, back. He's going to get stronger. He's going to see things again. But if I'm Edmonton, I'm going after that right side. I'm going after these guys. And you know you have Darrell Walker. You've got uh, Jalen Marshall. Uh, listen, O.C. Cousy, I'm not sure. I don't. He's only got three – or what's he got? Five catches? Yeah, five catches. The kid that it really – I mean, wouldn't it be something – Lucky Jackson, the other Lucky, right? There's two Luckies in the league, one in B.C. and now one here in, uh, in Edmonton. Lucky Jackson, who's just hungry, hungry to play. And then, of course, the kid that I like, I really like this kid, Dylan Marshall. Uh, he's got five catches over 30 yards. He's a game breaker. But, I mean, if they move these guys around offensively, and I know, what's it, McAdoo? McAdoo. I think it's McAdoo, the offense coordinator. you got to attack this. If I'm looking at I'm, I'm looking at these guys. This is where I would go. Well, l let's talk about the Blue Bombers injured list right now, Chris. And uh, a lot of people wondering, uh, you know, here's uh, Andre asking the nature of uh, Greg Ellingson's injury. Second yeah, good injury. question. Second stint for Greg Ellingson on the six-game injured list. It's lower body, 
don't know specifically what it is. You know, you can check the Bombers uh, injury report if, if you want to know what it's listed as. But, um, you know, this is something that's been nagging him and uh, probably a, an aggravation thing just to speculate. Clearly speculation here. Um, but, you know, going through it, offense versus defense, much more banged up on the defensive side. Malik Clements, who stepped in admirably, played extremely well yes. next to Adam Big Hill when Kyrie Wilson went down. Uh, has not been practicing, but he is smiling, running around a little bit. Uh, could be uh, somebody that would return this season. Alden Darby just arrived on day two of practice this week. They're going to give him a week to, uh, you know, get acclimated, look at some pictures, get uh, reaccustomed to the Richie Hall defense. Noah Hallett, yeah. close to returning, but he's really been right there with Brandon Alexander and recovering from offseason knee surgery. How about this? Chris, speaking of the defensive line, it goes beyond um, it, it goes beyond uh, just um, the new defensive end that they brought in, uh, Keon Adams. Theadric yeah. Hansen is in a boot, is on the one-game injured list. It is listed as an Achilles. However, he told me this week, a couple weeks he'll be out of the boot. So is he somebody that might be able to return for the playoffs? We will see. Jackson yeah. Jeff. Uh, I don't think this is a serious issue with Jeff Coat. Just my gut feeling. I think he's had a tough year. He's had a tough year. Sure, that he's healthy for the long run. They're going to need Jackson Jeff Coat. Yeah, but I think you know of all the injured guys you talk about, I think the guy they missed the most is Kyrie Wilson. Uh, I think Kyrie Wilson was a spark plug on that linebacker crew. I thought he was having an outstanding campaign before he got hurt. Uh, he, he just does so many good things. Uh, he's great on the guy on the run. He's great in covering pass. Uh, this is no, uh, you know, disrespect to Briggs or, or Goche or Cole or Cadwalder, but he was that, he was that guy that was having, I thought until he got, he, you know, he was having an all-star type campaign. Um, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting when you talk about it. Now you're talking about, um, uh, the Theodric Hansen. I saw him in the walking boot doing drills with the bags, swatting bags, getting the, you know, doing the moves. But that's a tough thing. I mean, it's tough to come back. I don't care what anybody says. Yeah, they have great trainers. Yes, you get first-rate treatment. But there's, again, a, that's a, the heart of the guy wants to come back early. But the, the reality is you can't come back too early and put yourself in a bad situation. Well, you, he you, does not you want know, to hurt himself. To win. Winnipeg needs a win. They've got three games remaining, right? That's Edmonton right. On Saturday, Absolutely. On the 15th, home to BC on the 30, uh, 28th. They need one win. They will probably get more than that. But oh, God, if yeah. You can rest Jackson Jeffcoat so he can be strip sacking the quarterback in the West final, that's what you need. I just want to quickly move on through these, Chris. Nick Taylor uh, yep. had surgery. His season is unfortunately over. And that was a he was big thing. Kyle Walters felt it necessary to acquire Alden Darby via trade. Malcolm Thompson on the one game injured list. Uh, I think he got nicked up last game. Not sure of, of the uh, extent uh, of the injury. Drew Wolitarski is another guy who is right there with Greg Ellingson, laughing, smiling in casual clothes, but yeah. running around a little bit, having fun, catching footballs. We will see. And Carlton Agadosi uh, out of his boot, out of his walking boot. So I wouldn't even rule him out. Uh, for the season at this point. To me, Chris, these next two players are the two biggest hits Winnipeg's defense has taken this season. Mercy Maston, obviously another Achilles injury for a second straight year in training camp. And Demario Houston, nowhere near looking like he's going to return to yeah. practice, not running around during practice at all. So um, those two guys are two of the best DBs uh, young, good young DBs, Maston, much more veteran, but Demario Houston was the, um, you know, the, the breakout defensive back star of this Blue Bombers defense this year. You know, yeah, he, he, str he, he struggled in the beginning. He got stronger as it went on. Then he got hurt. It's interesting because there's two guys that you talk about. Um, one is Greg Ellingson, yeah. who they paid a bit of money to get. Second time he's been injured. You have to look at age. You have to look at production. You look. I have to look at salary. This might be the last kick at the cat for this guy. You know what I mean? I mean, you have to look at that. That's the honest God truth, buddy. You know what it's like. I played. If you get hurt and you're, you're you're not producing and you're getting cash, yeah, it's great to be a practice helping everybody else out. 
But there comes a time when a younger guy coming up is going to take your spot. Well, and, and it comes a time where GMs aren't going to give you full value for your production or past production, right? And who's the, who's the, the session guy you took? Where you sign a guy for six years and the final three years, you know, they're half, half as productive uh, as they yeah. were in the first three years. So but, uh, for great But yeah, we, we talked about this last podcast, though, brother. The fact is Cor Taylor Cornelius and Jake Mayer from – Got partially guaranteed contracts now, which is not a thing that's a normal thing for the CFL, which I think is a beautiful thing. It protects however, players. Wow. However, that, that your, oh. however, there were signing bonuses. Money in your hand. Yeah, is signing bonus. Gets. Money in your you hand is what? guaranteed as it gets. I, exactly you know what? What? He signed a two hundred fifty thousand dollars. He got a two hundred fifty thousand dollars signing bonus when he signed prior to twenty twenty one. It doesn't guarantee you play no. I agree with you. It, 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 I don't. Oh yeah, money is money. I agree with. Okay, at the end of the day, if you got your bank account goes up, it's it's a win win. But having said that, I think a, a team. Yeah, the bonus looks good. There's no doubt about it. Uh, and signing bonus for sure. But I like the guarantee part of it. I really do because sometimes a guy gets hurt in the middle of the season and he's still got a guaranteed contract. He still gets something. One of the one of my complaints about the CFL and it's always been the same is a guy gets hurt on the 18th game or 17th game of the season in the CFL, and basically he's done. You know, there's no guarantee, and that's one thing the players' association is really trying to fight for to bring these guys back and say, "Hey, we have to take care of these guys. We just can't discard them and go, hey, sorry, buddy, thanks for coming up. Good cup of coffee. Bye bye. I hate it.'" So I'm hoping that, that you know, that, uh, and that's why I like the PA. I think the PA is trying to take care of players, and that's what it's about. It is about the players. Without the players, you don't have a league. So, I mean, I'm looking forward to see what they do. But, I, again, like you said, you're talking about uh, when I look at guys like uh, Cam Lawson, who had his first, he has one sack, and it was against Edmonton, coincidentally. Uh, Casey Sales, who uh, I didn't realize was banged up a little bit during the week. I, yeah. As they said, they, they put him back. Uh, Deshaun Cooper, I haven't seen him much. I know he's listed as a backup to Willie. Uh, you probably see him more than I do in practice. Yeah, he hasn't been in the games. He's been dressing, but he hasn't been playing a lot. So as he plays, obviously special teams. I guess that's what I'm assuming, or sometimes not even that. But yeah. here's the here's the thing I want to talk about, and I love the comment. I was they were talking to uh, Coach O'Shea, and they said, "What about this, Chris Kolikowski?" Let's talk about this that. This kid is playing well, man. This kid is playing well. We thought, okay, he's coming in from Michael Couture, who was a CFLPA All-Star last year. And we thought, okay, it's only a matter of time before Michael comes back. And now Couture is 100%. And, and the answer perfect. was, and what, and what was the answer to O'Shea? He said, we have two guys that can play the position. Not saying that Michael's coming back to start again. I think, yeah, I think they like this Chris Kolakowski. He's fitting in very well. He's an aggressive run blocker. This is nothing against Michael, but it tells you what happens when you get injured. You open a door for somebody else to come in and play, and if he plays well and they're winning, you don't want to disrupt the chemistry or the continuity of that old line. That's a huge thing. So now Michael's got to fight to get back in that lineup. It, it, to me, it's crazy. You would never have thought about that if it was one game. If it was the first game Konikowski played, you'd say, ah, Michael's back next week. Well, it's not happening. Uh, some people in the in the live chat, I just want to chime in real quick. They're talking about Darian Durant signing with the Blue Bombers, getting a signing bonus, and then retiring. Uh, you know, and that he loved oh, doing that. Oh, that was crap. I, I think Darian Durant, j just my gut, I think he would have done that to any team. It was not a win. Yes, 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 um, yes. It was, it was about all about the money. It's about the money. System, right? Yeah, about sticking the money, it brother. The system, I'm sure he had a lot of teammates that signed contracts, friends, sign contracts, get cut, you don't get a dime. You know, and uh, it kind of goes into that conversation about guaranteed money uh, being a okay. huge step in the right direction for the Players Association uh, and the league. But yeah, like with Michael Couture coming back, he steps in in those jumbo packages, Chris, those big bodied packages, yep. edge, goal line, short yardage, comes in at tight end. Um, Couture is a very fleet of foot player. He's not yeah, he's a very good football, he's a good football player. Little fire hydrant, you can't move him. Michael Couture can move. 
So I, I think he's a, a player. Well, we've seen him. They, they use him in polls. They'll pull yes. him off the line and, and send him off to the corner. I know you know that. Um, but but for those out there that aren't familiar with the term, they'll pull Michael Couture. And now you're you're kind of pre-pulling him and just lining him up uh, yeah. at the end. So, uh, Listen, you know, Evan Dawson's Michael's right there too. Like why? Yeah, we, we haven't talked about Liam Dobson. He plays short yarders. Yeah, he comes in as a tight end sometimes. Doesn't get now. That's another. We could talk about that, but I'll be honest with you. Here's my here's my thing about that. Michael Couture is very cerebral, very smart, understands it. You have to have a center. A center can be a great athlete, but if he doesn't have anything upstairs, is if it's empty between the ears, he ain't gonna play. And uh, and I think both these guys, Konikowski and Couture, have that going for them. Liam Dobson is going to get a lot of playing time. And why do I say that? Because the Bombers are going to wrap up first place. You know that. I know that. I mean, they're not going to lose three in a row. So, I mean, I think they're going to win, wrap up first place, and I think guys like Liam Dobson are going to get a lot of chance, a lot of opportunities to play and, 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 you know, basically play their trade. He's a big guy, very aggressive. They always sign these aggressive linemen who are good to go after and they love to attack guys. This is a good team. I mean, where is the weakness? You, If I asked you right now to pick a weakness, not today on the team, but if I looked at the weakness right now, I'm saying DBs, only on that wide side. Yep. That's my that's my thing. Other than that, Zach Kolaris, I look what he's done. He's got can, nine can I, can I interject? Yeah, can go interject? ahead. Go ahead, DB. Yeah, sorry, man. Weakness in addition to um, defensive back, in my mind, is okay, also the linebacking core. Yeah, They're, good point. Good, no, absolutely great, great point. You know, I, like I agree Adam 100%. Big Hill, Adam Big Hill is still a very, very oh, good yeah. football player. Let me He's be done. perfectly He's clear. Done. He is excellent. Yeah. Is he at most outstanding defensive player levels no. this year? No. Is he missing some tackles? Yeah, he's missed some tackles the last couple of weeks. It's a little Blazing. bit uh, uncharacteristic. He's been banged up a little bit, though, DB. And you actually said that before. You said he's got a little bit of a shoulder injury he's fighting with. So that's totally understand. And it's funny you say that because the guy that a lot of teams are pushing right now, a lot of reporters, now I don't know where you are because you get a vote. I don't get a vote. But they're really pushing Sean Lemon Yeah, for the, defensive the player. I, I think Sean Lemon's had an outstanding year. Um, yeah. But, Chris, I, I, in the words of a, a, a Hall of Fame offensive lineman I used to work on TSN radio with, ahem, number 63 himself, and I'm talking to him. In the yeah. words of that wise man, you get a sack in a game, what do you do in the other 50 snaps? Oh, I love you. I love you for remember that. You're 100% right, baby. I hated that stat because the guy would go, you know what? Player of the game, uh, Johnny Jacksaw. He got uh, two sacks, one tackle. But, yeah, and then you look at the other ones, and they're running past them. It's a very tainted stat. Like you run but I'll say this. Crap, you know? That's that's why I like this Jake Ceresna for Edmonton. Ten quarterback sacks, a bunch of tackles, 23 tackles. He's got, what, four force four, 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 four fumbles, easy to say. But, you know what, it's just – it's it's that's – and especially at that defensive tackle position. It is so difficult because majority of the time you're double teamed. It is a, it's, it's, it's just a, I like this kid, the way he plays. And he did not play, like I mentioned earlier in the, in the podcast, kid. He did not play against the Bombers before. Yeah. So he wasn't, this is the first time he's playing. I think we're going to have an excellent game. I hope it's a good game. I really do. But do I think the Bombers are going to win? Absolutely. If you look at Zach, though. And I want to talk about Zach again because You're Zach is right now. Today. Holy moly. Zach is like front runner for MVP at most of the player again, right? I mean, I don't know who's going to beat him right now. Well, uh, you know what? Let, let, let's talk a little bit about this. I yeah, let's go with it. Quickly, I want to quickly mention in, on the Sean Lemon debate. Okay, let's uh, go with it. And, and defensive linemen, you know, some of those top defensive linemen, Guachem in BC, uh, Malden, uh, the fourth in Ottawa, uh, Willie Jefferson here in Winnipeg, uh, Mike Rose in Calgary on the interior, um, Mike Moore on the interior in, in Montreal. There's some very, very good defensive linemen this year. What I will say in defense of yeah. say a Willie Jefferson 
is I've seen, even over the last month, like since late August, okay, last six, seven weeks, the Bombers have had a couple buys in there. Some of Willie Jefferson's best games, he's had zero sacks. That's right. That's right. And, you know, that goes to your point, DB. Uh, and I think O'Shea said, talked about that a little bit too. He said, the things that don't go unrecognized. And I don't know who did the stats. There was a guy who did the stats way back when. I believe it was a couple years ago. And it was all about pressures. And actually, the number one guy in the Bombers at that time was Stone Fight. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, Steven Richardson. But where is he in BC? Well, he was injured in training camp. Yeah, but he, they said he might come back by the end of the year. He was a horse, a horse. Yeah. Nathan Rourke, that- an, another guy. And I don't want to get on BC, but Nathan Rourke, another guy. No walking boot anymore. He's jogging. What's going to happen? That kid's a freak. You know okay, as so well as I do. Nathan Rourke, and this leads into the MOP and MOC discussion. Yeah. Most of them yeah. most of them Canadian. Nathan Rourke is 24 years old. He suffered an injury that is rare and serious. This isn't yeah. just like a high ankle sprain or a broken you know, bone. It's weird, eh? Yeah. Yeah, it's, you know, uh, look it up. <laughs> You'll find it. Um, I don't know what it is. I remember you said uh, we were talking about you, that. You know, collectively, but. Um, well, no, but I, no, I agree. And I, but listen, I, I, the BC scares me. Now, Vernon Adams, last we did the podcast last week, brother, and you and me were talking about Vernon Adams, and I said I was not impressed with his last game. And then I watched he him. Played, well, he, he, yeah. he played pretty good again the last week they won. He's um, he's in a new system. He's trying to figure it out. Yeah, but he can be a very dangerous ball player because of his legs, because of his ability to escape and keep plays going. But having said that, Calgary is a team that scares me right now. Hold, I, Chris, I, I, I think gotta, that, I, gotta, I gotta stop you. Okay, you okay, call me DB. You call me DB. Yeah. I'm calling you AD for an attention deficit right now. You're jumping on. <laughs> <laughs> it's, you know it's, what? I'm the pinball. I'm the pinball of the CFL, brother. You won't believe it. I, I, I go all over the place because I Nathan, love the game. Nathan, and it's Rourke almost like old. the Liz Frank injury is serious. It takes surgery to repair. And if yeah. he's in that 2%, is what I've read, 2% can come back quickly from that injury. Even if he is, he's 24 and like, through the lights out, through the flipping lights out. And let's be honest, yeah. In eight games to start the year, why yeah. risk anything for a team that might finish in third place in the West? Okay, he has got bigger fish to fry. The BC Lions would be would be irresponsible, in my opinion, to rush him back. They traded for well, Vernon Adams Jr. If they're going to win, it's going to be with Vernon Adams Jr. That's just okay. How I- um, that said, when it comes to the CFL awards, would you take Nathan Rourke's eight games and either prorate it or let it stand on its own in comparison to, say, a Zach Kolaris or a no, Kadeem? No, 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 no. No, Kadeem carries a different story. Kadeem carries a different story. You know that as well as I do, TB. He is, he is a freaky running back, and they have the best offensive line. I mean, the Bombers have a great old line too, right? But we're talking 13 sacks. I thought they were going to be in when they lost Derek Dennis, who I thought, in my opinion, and this is nothing against Stanley Bryant, who I love, I thought he was the top guy. Now he's hurt. Now the front runner to me still, but the, but the old line is always still only give with 13 sacks. Again, sacks are a lot also reflective of your quarterback. If your quarterback gets rid of the ball, if he's a mobile quarterback, obviously the sacks don't add up. So, there's a lot of things to take in. But when you're running back, is leading the league. That's one thing you can't take away from O-line because they have to work together to get the O-line. Well, Will it they takes vote? a quarterback to throw well, to a receiver, and it takes a receiver well, to catch. Yeah. A receiver okay, to catch. you have a vote. You have a vote. I, I won't put you on the spot, but maybe I will. Maybe I will. Stanley Bryant or Derek Dennis? Um... Now remember, Derek might be uh, Stanley might be watching us having a progy or something right now. <laughs> <laughs> I've chatted with Stanley about those sorts of things before. Um, Stanley is a, is a great guy and one of my favorite people. Uh, but but that He's aside, I don't, per- I don't let those personal things um, you know cloud cloud my uh, judgment. I speak to as many people as I can. I watch as much as I can. I look at the numbers as deeply and thoroughly as I can. Um, 
it, it was tough for Derek Dennis to, to get injured uh, and, and have his season end early. However, I don't like penalizing individuals because they suffered an injury. Interesting you say that. Sure. Okay. And Nathan yeah. Rourke, for how good he was, might edge me back towards maybe giving uh, a player the benefit of the doubt of just what they did. No, in, in that no chance. No chance. Well, no chance. We, we can discuss that at another time. But You're going to tell me that you're going to give Nathan Rourke over Zach? In regards to the offensive line, we, we'll get there, Chris. Oh, the offensive line. Okay, let's offensive line. I know you know what, you're kind of you're kind of like a do, you're kind of doing a Winnipeg Bell right now on this answer right now. You're dancing around doing a little two top. Oh yeah, it's because you got a you got a Tommy gun firing at my toes. I'm jumping well, here's, over the. Here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking, really, Stanley. You just now, asked me a question. Are you gonna let me answer? Okay, no, but I also want to throw one other aspect in. What about Jamarcus? Doesn't get the respect he deserves. Jamarcus yeah. is a stud. I watched Jamarcus. He's pretty good, man. Hey, so, people have spoken. Okay, you about answer. You answer this now, and I'll let you I speak. The Blue Bombers no longer have the best offensive line in the league. It has nothing no, they to don't. do with Andrew Harris or Brady Oliveira or the run game or anything. Brady's doing pretty good. We didn't talk yes, about him yet. Yes, but Calgary has the best offensive line in the league. Their yards yeah. per rush doesn't matter if it was Peyton Logan or oh, uh, yeah. Gary or Tommy Stevens running behind that group. Uh, they're the best offensive line in the league, and I I will very likely vote. I, I you know like obviously we don't even have our ballots yet. I got to do the homework, but I will very likely vote don't. for their most outstanding. Watch what you're saying now, because you may not be invited to bomber practice. Invited. Stan is going to just come over and give you a walloping. Oh, yeah, right. No, I know. I, well, this is, you know what? And I know they listen to us. They watch this stuff. They watch us because they know we're talking what we know. We, we speak it like we speak from the heart. I agree. Uh, listen, and I and I want to tell you right, DB, I appreciate your honesty because that's honest. I would probably go with the same pick. But that's nothing against Stanley. Stanley is, for me, a, a, a first of all, Hall of Famer. There's no doubt in my mind. Bomber Hall of Famer. Ring of Honor. Oh, Ring yeah. of honor. Ring of honor. Ring yeah, of honor. Six, uh, six, to six, me, it's just, yeah, he's that good. Yet he's so quiet. And it's wild because when you play O line, a lot of times guys get, you know, like they, like me, I was more of an extrovert at O line versus an introvert you where you're just trying. Yeah, I was, I was a quarterback. And, and I remember uh, Tommy Clemens telling me to shut the F up in the huddle. Oh. Uh, I remember, I, I remember uh, Sammy Garza when I changed the play, and Sammy was going to throw a pass, and Sammy goes, "We're running a, it's called a 54," and I go, "No, nope, we're going to run the ball." Sammy goes, "No, I got, we're passing 54." No, nope, we're running the ball. Ran the ball, we got stuffed. He goes off the sidelines, and Cal goes, "What the hell are you doing, Sammy?" Sammy goes, "Uh," but he wouldn't run on me. He didn't tell me. And then no, Cal but I'm sure he went to the huddle. That young oh, quarterback went to the uh, huddle and said, "Hey, 63, do you know who my father-in-law is?" Cal. Well, yeah, I could tell you other stories off the air, but anyway, Cal. Cal looked, but it's funny because Cal he didn't say he didn't say my name, but guess what? He looked right down at me and he goes, "Shut up." This is what Cal told me: "Shut up and play." He yeah. knew. He knew. He knew. Of course. But we had a great team. Think about the guys we had. When you got, I played beside Miles Gurrell. Can you imagine the right side? That was our right side. Miles was my right guard. I played Blackie. I played Bob Molly, but Miles was the biggest guy I ever played with side. We just, oh my God, it was crazy. We would just crush people. But Miles used to drive me crazy because I told you this before. Miles would go, "Hey, where were we drinking later?" And I go, "You can't be friends with these guys." Anyway, I, I'm sorry. I, I'm on a tangent. That that's okay. No, that that's all right. People in the live chat uh, talking about how much they uh, they love story time with Bluto, and uh, I I definitely uh, do too. I don't even know well, the where weirdest. We're at, you know what the weirdest thing is? Right? We're, Johnny we're Hodge. Do you, do, you, do you know Johnny Hodge? Yeah, of course. He wanted to write a book. Asked me to write a book with him, and I started it, but I couldn't do it for. A, I, I I can't. I just. I felt like I was almost going to be like Terry Bradshaw. I got to tell stories that were not going to be good for people. Mm. So I backed away. But 
Anyway, no, yeah, I, we're, I, on we're, we're on the story. We're talking about the Bombers. We're talking the Bombers now. <laughs> and DB, who, congratulations, working for the Jets now. God bless you, brother. I'm not working for the Jets. No, no, no. No, no. Oh, you're doing some stuff for OB. I cover I cover the Jets. Yeah, I, I, I freelance part-time for CJOB. And, and you write, understand uh, how much how much stuff you do? You cover the you cover the Bisons. You cover the Winnipeg Rifles. Hey, when do they play again? Uh, October play again? 16th. You can find it in the video description below. Uh, get out to the next Rifles home game. They've what lost, what? The, the, the Rifles have lost two straight games. They're still ranked number 10 in the nation. They're that When's good. The next time of, when is the next time to play at that, river, that, that field in Winnipeg here? No, they're playing at IG Field on Sunday, oh, October wow. 16th, 3 p.m. More information, riflesfootball.com, hashtag rifle up. You can find them on all the socials at Rifles Football. But uh, they're gearing up for a, a big playoff run right now. Good um, for them. Yeah. But yeah, I think no, Jordy, right, Rifles. Jordy Wilson does I was calling Bison's basketball earlier today. Are you serious? You were calling yeah. basketball? Yeah, a little, little. You're, little a, uh, you're a young Rod Black. Western University, the Westman, uh, yeah, really. Yeah, Lake You're Canada, a man Lake of many Canada. talents, brother. Mm -hmm. Holy shit, that that's good. Listen, I'll tell you right though, Jordy Wilson for the Rifles does a great job. They got a great team, um, and I say the same thing. I, I, I get out and watch this because these are great future stars in, in any league. Yeah, uh, I, I unfortunately have not gone to a game. Uh, I watch my grandkids play. They play for. Uh, they play for uh, Kelowna East Reavers. Yeah, but the, they they've they've won three games in a row, and then the last two teams have forfeited. So I was supposed to go to a game last last night against Tech Vock, but the game was canceled again. Maybe which drives me nuts. You know this, Chris, but but you and I used to call Winnipeg Rifles games on CJFLTV.com. Yes. Uh, Westy used to join us uh, as well. Now I do the games with Matt Rollison. So if you can't make it down to you can watch it on, on CJFLTV.com. Um, but yeah, right for one of my favorite uh, memories was that uh, TV was going cool there. Video description below. They are a huge supporter uh, of us here uh, on Bonfire Sports. Um, yeah, waiters talking about, you know, maybe I'll do curling in the future. This is the reality, Chris. I know you can relate to this in football and in life. The more you can do, Yes. The more tools you got in the tool belt, right? And that, that's what it is in football, too. So for someone like Retta Cramdy, he had to cut his teeth playing special teams. Now he's yes. getting the opportunity to play starting snaps on defense. Same with Shane Goche. And no doubt he's going to be better than he was last game and better than the week before because he's cut from that Mike O'Shea cloth. He's going to work tirelessly to improve. and Five, get ten. So as the Blue Bombers get healthy once again, uh, or, or, or like, you know, uh, gradually through time, I think they're going to be a better football team when they need to be. And that's in November, not in late September, early October, because they've had their, their fair share of, uh, uh, of injuries. Listen, I agree with you. Ready? Five, 10, uh, university of Montreal. They put a lot of good players. Um, I just think that you look at what they had and I think all the Derby, that's why they picked them up. I, all the Derby's probably just going to go to that dime, dime, just where he played in the Grey Cup and played, you know, going into playoffs. I, I think they, I think they need to, uh, they need to plug him in at halfback. That, that's, that's you think? Okay, so you, you are saying Evan Holm. I'm saying, uh, well, let's see. You know what happens if Red Cramney comes out tomorrow with a huge game, a couple picks, a couple tackles, just does it right. That I'm yep. going to eat. And I will say, hey, God bless you, brother. You know what? Because I guess I look at guys where they were, and I look at guys, new guys, and I always say, that's what I pick. I want to pick on these guys because they haven't faced the bullets under the lights, right? Right. So let's see what happens. That's where it's all proven. That's where it's yeah, all amen, proven. Amen. Amen. Uh, Chris, let's get into your keys to the game. What's it going to take for Winnipeg to come away with victory number 14 on the season and get half a game uh, away in the standings from locking down first place in the West? Well, from Pennsylvania, it's this. Just, just keep, they have the best second down conversion still. We haven't even talked about, and I apologize to our viewers, Dalton Schoen, who just set a bomber rookie record for 11 touchdowns. Yeah. He has now 24 or 34 second down conversions 
number one in CFL. He's also number one average catch of 19 yards. And if you watch him last game, is that he's crazy good. And I told this, and we've said this every podcast, guys, watch this kid because he ain't here next year. He is not here next year. He's gone. He's going to get an opportunity, and he knows it. His paycheck went from, uh, you know, a couple of bologna sandwiches to steak. He's going to get some good stuff, man. So um, I just think the Bombers continue to play and get great first down production, but I think they need to run the ball. Edmonton's terrible against the run. I think Brady could have a huge – because he's been – he's really played well the last six games. Boy, oh boy. I looked at his numbers. They're, they're crazy. So yeah. – Run the ball, enjoy it defensively. Don't let this guy beat you with his legs because Taylor likes to take off. Any quarterbacks is leading that, that their team in, in rushing. Eh, I don't like that. But having said that, you got to keep him under. You, you know what? Make him beat you with the pass. He's going to make a couple of Aaron throws. It's going to be a couple of interceptions. And special teams, I think Janarian Grant is a breakout. I'm picking Janarian Grant to have a huge return against Edmonton. I, I just think the Bombers are going to win. I hope it's a close game for the entertainment, just for the fans. But I think the Bombers will win, brother. And now I'll, I'll let you, DB, the master, tell me what you <laughs> add to that. Yeah, you know, I think you hit on, on all the, the major points. Um, I, I did want to mention that um, Ed Tate of BlueBombers.com wrote about Brady Oliveira this week. I think yes. he is going to be a critical piece uh, to Winnipeg's success on Saturday yeah. night with Hinton in yeah. town. Um, you know, r- like, don't those conversations about is Brady the guy, don't, doesn't it feel like like years ago now? Yeah. How great has he been since I'm that? I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. I mean, the guy had to come out of the Andrew Harris shadow, and that shadow is huge. Yeah. Huge shadow. You're talking about a future Hall of Fame or you're coming out and trying to be the same guy. But he doesn't want to be. And he actually said, I am not Andrew Harris. I am Brady Oliveira. That's right. I love what he does with the dogs up north. I love what he does outside of football. But he's played very well. I think I looked at it. I, I kind of wrote down the stats somewhere here that his last couple of games, or last five or six games, he's averaging almost six yards a carry. I mean, he's just... He's playing outstanding. But he also said what – and we talked about this. We hit this on the head earlier in our podcast. You said to me, what's going on, Brady? Why is he not getting the huge – and we said, has to find that chemistry with the O-line, the ability to find my holes. And now he runs a miles an hour to A. If it's supposed to be between the guard and tackle, bam, he hits it. Yep. I think Brady is uh, – he's going to get 1,000 yards. What's he at, 800 and – What's he at, right? 858. He's at 112 yards. He could be, he's going to get 1,000. Okay, here's my prediction. 1,000 yards for Brady tomorrow. There it wow. is, buddy. Okay, okay. here's my prediction, and it, I'm okay. just doubling down on my prediction from the preseason. If you remember, Chris, check the tape. Uh, Nick Dembski needs about 270 yards in these final yeah. three games. To have a thousand combined rushing and receiving, I think he will do it with the way he has come on. What a freak, freaky, freaky, freaky freak. How much you talk about Brady Oliveira taking over for Andrew Harris? It's been Brian Nick Dembski taking over from Andrew Harris, the local guy who is a legit veteran star. Kind of cool that all three of them went to the same school. Yeah, all three of them. That's the coolest thing when you think about it. But I agree with you. I saw Andrew Harris watching. Uh, he was. Uh, I don't know what his status is. If he's going to come back this year, I'm not sure if he's out for the rest of the year. I saw him coaching. The, the they have a, they have that running back, Ulet. I think his name is Ulet. Kid's a freaking horse. Yeah. Uh, big boy. Oh, he runs hard. Long right. hair. Big beard. Gotta love the guy with the beards, man. Yeah. Anyway, he's a big. Well, look at you. You got your beards coming in, eh? No, not like who left. Yeah, it's not, no. <laughs> not like you, my friend. Not like oh, you. No, but I'm, uh, I'm last sick. thing I want to mention, uh, Corey May was asking how many total votes uh, in the CFL for I, I don't know. There are five in every market. Four members of the media and the head coach. Now, very. I don't think a head coach has ever revealed 
their ballots. There's a couple rounds of voting for division all-stars, then league all-stars, uh, and then most outstanding players, O-line, rookie, the rest. I think we know yeah. who's the most outstanding Donnie, rookie come here. Come here. here. Who are you talking I about? I want to tell you what, DB, just before we go off the podcast, yeah. uh, my wife Vera here and my one of my best friends, Donnie, is here. Here they are. There's my wife, and there's Donnie. Get in here, Donnie. Where the hell are you? Where's Where's Donnie? You gotta get there's Donnie. Hey, oh, hey. This is what happens when you have CFL fans. They want to hear our podcast. They don't want to hear the podcast on YouTube, which we do. No, they want us here live, we're, we're brother. Alive, man. We're alive, brother. We're alive. That's good. That's awesome. Well, Chris, I, I think on that note, you need to go, and and so do I. Um, yeah. But uh, really uh, appreciate your uh, your huge, huge role uh, on this. Anytime. Hey, you know what, DB? Uh, I enjoy this. I, I actually enjoy it. And uh, you want a prediction? Yeah. I'll give you a prediction. Is the spread right now? 25-13 Bombers. I don't know why the number just came to me. Well, about that's 13 bombers. Point spread. I'm with you. I think Winnipeg will win, but they will not cover a 12 point spread. No, 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 no. Edmonton is not as bad as everybody thinks. So enjoy the game, my friends. Uh, DB, always a pleasure. And you know what? I actually love the fact that you allow me to do this game from my lake because it's Thanksgiving in a couple of days. I'm at the cabin. Um, you know, you're more than gracious for allowing me to do it here. So God bless you, man. Have a great Thanksgiving. You could be on the Gold moon and find a way to get a laptop in your hands. Hey, man. Have a good time, brother. All right, everybody. Take care. We'll see you next time. All right. After Dark, post-game show right here on Bonfire Sports. We'll see you then. Okay. See you, brother. <laughs>